Which is the best One Piece gacha game? Emphasis on the word gacha, because there are plenty One Piece games available in the current market, like One Piece Odyssey and the series of Pirate Warriors with multiple titles. A game of that nature is essentially defined by its lottery mechanic, also known as gacha, where you can do pulls, spins, draws, or whatever the game calls them, by spending in-game currency, which can be acquired by playing the game, like its events or specific quests, even logging in perhaps, and of course, spending real-life money. The gist of it is that you obtain characters based on luck and the specific drop rates each game has for its system. There are almost always character rarities, with specific characters being more rare, more appealing and stronger than others. In case you have never heard of any One Piece gacha games in the past, it is definitely highly likely that you have heard of some of the Hoyoverse titles. And that is because they are some of the most popular gacha games ever, with their immersive worlds and character design. Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail are definitely their most successful titles, but even their newest game, Zenless Zone Zero, is doing very good numbers so far. Let's get back to One Piece though, and the first gacha game I want to speak about, One Piece Fighting Path. The reason I want to start with Fighting Path is because not a lot of information exists on the metrics and the revenue of this game. From the time of its beta release, back in 2020, the game has been exclusive to China and was developed by China Mobile Games and Entertainment Group while being licensed by Toei Animation. One Piece Fighting Path is an action-adventure RPG, and even though it has its servers up and running in China, it seems extremely unlikely for it to get a global release at this point. It's not out of the ordinary for an anime-inspired game to release only in one Asian region to test the waters, but normally, if a game is very successful in its first region debut, different or rather translated versions of it will release globally in order for the game to reach an even larger audience and make more money. A couple of years have gone by since the release of Fighting Path and we have zero news of a global adaptation. This could mean a couple of things. The game significantly underperformed, lost interest from a lot of players or revenue after the first months of existence, making the adaptations not easily justifiable for the budget. Maybe there were some licensing issues or a company could just not be found that wanted to distribute the game to the global market. Either way, we cannot know for sure and can only speculate. The sure thing is, Fighting Path had its fair share of technical issues early on, which did not help its case, but is now in a much more stable spot. In my opinion, one of the most impressive parts about the game is that it has a competitive scene, currently going through its 11th season with players facing each other in 3 vs 3 One Piece battles. Each character in the game has unique abilities and a special move which can be used to chain together combos, truly living up to the word of fighting in the game's title. Many One Piece characters have made an appearance through the game's story and banner system, like Sanks, Aokiji, Katakuri, Mihawk and Whitebeard, with Ulti being the latest addition to the roster, while Siki is the next character about to be released, at least at the time of me recording this video. One Piece fans outside of China technically can still try and play the game, but in a more unconventional way, through a VPN, a translator, and perhaps other third-party software, but even then, people can be hit with inaccurate translations, high ping during the game's PvP, which could definitely make for an unpleasant experience. If you are enjoying the video so far, consider leaving a like, I would greatly appreciate it. Let's now move on to the second One Piece gacha game though, that is also exclusive to China, One Piece Dream Pointer. Out of all the games on this list, this is the most recent one, released in early April of 2024. Similarly to Fighting Path, 
Dream Pointer does not have an official announcement or any news actually for a global release. But the interesting part with this game is that it is way more recent than Fighting Path and in my opinion still definitely has a chance to come out for audiences outside of China. One Piece Dream Pointer, developed by Sensing Games, is a turn-based role-playing game featuring none other than our favorite One Piece characters. The gameplay is structured around turn-based combat where using the specific character skill cards is the key to victory. Dream Pointer had a very strong release, with the game reaching the top of the regional app store, having even players from outside of China wondering when they can get their hands on it. And while technically, players outside of China still have the ability to play the game and download it, they need to jump through some hurdles first, like having a VPN and other third-party software to help them access it. By visiting a website called Gacha Revenue, and searching for One Piece Dream Pointer, we can see its performance from the time it released. The same is not applicable to Fighting Path, hence why I mentioned that it's not easy to actually find metrics on the game. As we can see, Dream Pointer had a very strong release of 2.8 million, followed by some big dips in revenue though, which makes me think if the numbers for the China exclusive games are accurate. Because if they are here on Gacha Revenue, then we might have another Fighting Path situation in our hands with Dream Pointer and never see this title get a global release. The August revenue specifically is under 100,000, which is of course very bad for a Gacha game, especially one centered around the One Piece franchise. The game will soon be hosting its half anniversary with the release of Sanks, so that might be huge help for the numbers to increase once again. Based on my research on various Chinese outlets, the game had a mostly positive reception from fans and got some encouraging reviews and ratings, even reaching a 4.6 out of 5 stars in the Chinese iOS App Store. Majority of the negative comments and low reviews were focusing on the game crashing often and having some tedious routines that got old pretty quickly for some players. If the gacha revenue metrics are accurate, then lots of players either stopped spending or dropped the game altogether, which could indicate that it is another gacha game cash grab based on a popular IP. But if it's not, and the game improves overall and also starts releasing more characters, then it might pick up steam and maybe even get a global release if the budget allows it. Are you interested in any of these two China exclusive titles, Dream Pointer and Fighting Path? Do you want them to get a global release? Would you give the game a try? Let me know in the comments down below. And let's proceed to our first, out of the two, globally released One Piece Gacha games, which is One Piece Treasure Cruise. The game released on the 12th of May 2014 by Bandai Namco. And yes, it has been active for more than 10 years at this point, and recently got its 10th anniversary. The game was originally released in Japan exclusively and it did very well, then got a global release supporting different languages in the next 8 months. The game maintained two different timelines for a while, the Japanese version and the global version, with them having different anniversaries and some different character releases but for the most part, Global was strictly following the Japanese schedule. In order for them to maximize the global revenue and essentially stop global players from planning ahead on what characters are good and what characters they want to pull, multiple events got fast forwarded in the global server and the two servers were synced in late 2021. Treasure Cruise is a turn-based RPG slash collection game where you need to assemble your crew from a variety of characters in your possession that can help you go against different quests by dealing with the bosses and their mechanics. All units in the game can either help you with utility abilities or damage boosting ones in order to deplete the enemy's HP bar. The attacking system is very simple and based around tap timing and color advantage, but the many different buffs, debuffs and abilities 
can definitely be overwhelming for newer players. The game does have a steep learning curve because of all of the unique terminologies available, but also the tons of available characters which can easily confuse players on where they should spend their gems, aka their in-game currency. I have been playing and actually uploading One Piece Treasure Cruise for years on this very channel, so if you want more in-depth talk and videos on the game, feel free to navigate through my channel. But for this video, let's talk about the revenue for One Piece Treasure Cruise. It is very obvious that the game makes the most in anniversary and big event periods, so specifically during May, August and December, where all the big Super Sugo Fests are held. In case you are not familiar, a Super Sugo Fest is essentially the best possible banner to do pulls and get some of the best and strongest characters in the game. The Japanese sales are of course better than the global ones, but I think that, to be upfront, for the minimal effort and care that seems to be going towards the game lately, the numbers we see on these graphs are definitely good for the company on both regions. As a long time player, I also feel I have to mention this, I am currently very dissatisfied with the game and its direction and have stopped playing for a while, but I also have to say that for more casual players that perhaps want to get into it, One Piece Treasure Cruise can be fun, especially early on. Two of the biggest issues players have with the game are the following. The repetitive and very grindy monthly cycle of events that seems to also be getting worse after the 10th anniversary especially, and the use of boosted lists on every event limiting players to specific characters in order to team build for the event and not allowing them to use all the characters they have available to them in their box that have acquired through their playing time. Which is also a strategy the game has to make people pull for the new boosters to use of course. Until things improve for OPTC, I can't with a clear mind suggest this game to anyone but I also would definitely not want to completely stop people from exploring something that looks interesting to them. So at the end of the day, if this game really interests you, you can give it a try and then decide for yourself. One Piece Bounty Rush is the final gacha game and actually the most successful one based on the available numbers. Like its predecessor, One Piece Treasure Cruise, it was first released on Japan on March of 2018 and then globally released after approximately 10 months. One Piece Bounty Rush is a 4 vs 4 real-time game where players must capture and control a minimum of 3 out of the 5 treasure fields spread across the map. The time of each match can be up to approximately 3 minutes depending on how quick the winning team gathers all of the treasures. More than 200 One Piece characters are available, all having their basic abilities of dodge and attack, but also two unique skills, designated classes and elements. This is the first game on the list where you need to work with your team in order to win battles and gain rewards, but some solo battles are still available in the game. There are three different roles or classes to learn. The attacker, who specializes in defeating enemies, the runner, who specializes in getting treasure, and the defender, who specializes in defending treasures. Just like in One Piece Treasure Cruise, your characters here become stronger the more resources you invest in them and the more you upgrade them. Multiple different stages and a variety of modes are also present in Bounty Rush. The game is published by Bandai Namco, making them, for better or worse, the only company to manage globally released One Piece gacha titles. A testament to this game's success is the fact that it will be releasing on Steam in fall of 2024, according to the official trailer released by Bandai. Hopefully not only the UI but also the general game experience can improve with the Steam version. Some of the main criticisms players have about the game is taking a while to get familiar with the game's mechanics 
and catching up with the meta by not only acquiring the characters you want and need, but also properly upgrading them. I have mentioned the success of this game a couple of times already in this segment, so let's take a look at the numbers on Gacha Revenue. Similarly to Treasure Cruise, we can monitor the Japanese and global earnings, with the JP ones of course being higher and even rising to 20 and 15 million during specific anniversary events in August, 3.6 million in quote unquote dry periods is still decent and moving over to the global side, the same story is shown but with lower overall amounts, because here 3 million is the above average value for the earnings and not the low one. With the two regions combined, One Piece Bounty Rush has cracked the top 20 multiple times in the monthly gacha revenue reports and even got the 13th spot in August, getting ranked higher than other popular gacha games like Weathering Waves, Dragon Ball Legends and Solo Leveling Arise. All in all, what is the best One Piece gacha game? If we base our answer based on success, One Piece Bounty Rush is probably it. If we base our answer based on the globally available games that do not rely on the player to jump through specific hoops to get access to the game, then we definitely have to exclude both One Piece Fighting Path and One Piece Dream Pointer. Between One Piece Bounty Rush and One Piece Treasure Cruise, both have similar app store reviews and I am sure your stylistic preference in games plays a big role in answering the question because these two are completely different. I could provide my general opinion on One Piece Treasure Cruise, especially for the current period because things are looking pretty bad, but I cannot do the same for One Piece Bounty Rush because I haven't tried the game. Maybe I should give it a try after the Steam release. What I know is that I have seen players say it is very fun, but also be dissatisfied with the matchmaking and grind it can require. Negative comments exist about the drop rates to get the new characters, but the same comment can be made for all One Piece gacha games and all gacha games in general. Have you been actively playing or tried any of these One Piece gacha games? Let us know in the comments down below. Which one? How was your experience with it? And which one would you suggest if you have perhaps played them all? I will also leave a link to a poll in the pinned comment for you to vote for your favorite One Piece gacha game. As always though, thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.